I've never been solo before. Do I just do I just do I just start? Is that how these work? Yes. All right, sounds good. You want to share some comments and I'm sure no, cool. Absolutely. Uh, well, hello everybody, and happy Valentine's Day to you. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I did forget to wear red, but I did not forget that it was actually Valentine's Day. Uh, Senator Kunish was really worried I was going to be in trouble since I forgot. But um, I want to start off just by uh, visiting with you all and giving you an update regarding the school resource officer bill that both the House and Senate are trying to work on and get passed so that we can get school resource officers back in our schools to keep kids, teachers, and our school buildings safe. Uh, we just had our first hearing on that bill in the Senate Education Policy Committee. And um, I want to reiterate, like I have from the very beginning, we truly do see this as an opportunity for bipartisan collaboration to pass a bill that will actually fix the issue. And in, in my opinion, the bill that we had before us today was not ready. Um, it was not as far along uh, as maybe it has progressed in the House. We heard a lot of, we're still working on this, we're still meeting with stakeholders. Ah, that amendment's being looked at by my colleague in the House. I haven't quite you know, had a chance to peek at it yet or want to add it to the bill, what have you. And so uh, I think what we owe the public at the very least, given what happened last time, is that we are very clear, prepared, and ready when it comes to the legislation we're putting forward, especially as we bring it to the committees, because respecting that committee process and having us in a position where we can weigh in on it, provide feedback, make ch changes and tweaks is how we get a better product in the long run. And it's part of the process that was missed last time that led to this issue. Uh, we brought forward several very friendly, modest, minor amendments that were at, at a certain point in the committee just outright being rejected because people felt either A, uh, we didn't have time, or B, it wasn't relevant to the conversation. Uh, and that's not doing the work of the people. Doing the work of the people is hearing from their representatives regarding a bill that we know has all kinds of uh, massive implications across our schools in the state. And so to be dismissive of them, I thought was a little bit disrespectful and not helpful to the bipartisan collaboration we're calling for. Uh, so with that being said, I'm happy to answer any questions that folks have. I will tell you personally, I'm hoping and praying we do get a version of the bill that we can pass that will bring about the change that we need and people are asking for. That does remain to be seen. And the best analysis I can give you is this. The bill I want to pass should not be a Band-Aid. It should be a cure. That's what we need. Uh, we want something that's actually gonna bring school resource officers back to buildings and or not have to force them to continue to operate under modified procedures, which significantly reduce, excuse me, which significantly increase the response times to schools. Every second matters in an emergency, especially in our schools. And right now we're trading minutes for seconds and that's the wrong answer. Do you get the sense that Democrats will need Republican votes to pass this? I do. And, and you have Republicans that you know have, have had no input on the current legislation that you've discussed. Yeah, I don't think it's fair to say we haven't had any input. Okay. Uh, the conversations that have taken place were certainly uh, not a part of many of those conversations. Uh, some of them take place you know, kind of behind the scenes. I've always been a proponent, this is probably the old school board chair of me, of having those conversations publicly, transparently, in the open. It's okay if we don't have um, uh, an agreement. That should be a part of the conversation and debate that the public sees, right? Um, but we certainly haven't been uh, a part of the process to the extent that we would like. And I think today's experience in the Senate hearing uh, kind of proves that. I mean, I literally put forward an amendment that was basically a copy of the amendment that Representative Frazier accepted last night in the Public Safety Committee in the House. So it just shows to me we're di we're, we are disconnected. And why would you not accept an amendment that you know the person you're collaborating with Accepted. We have time to modify, change, and tweak things still as the, as the bill makes its way through the process. And so to me, it's a little disingenuous to say we're working with Republicans. We want your, your input. We want you to be a part of the process when we're offering amendments that we know will likely get accepted at some point. They just don't want it to come from a Republican. And that's a bigger issue when it comes to the politics of today. It shouldn't matter who the amendment comes from, Republican, Democrat. What matters is the substance of the amendment and isn't going to bring about the change that we all want. When you say... Uh you know, this isn't ready in its current form. I mean, what do you make of the fact that this was laid over in the House last night? I mean, do you think that was the right move? Do you think they did the right move maybe for the wrong reason? I, like, what, what are your thoughts on that situation? That's a great question, uh, Quinn. The right move, and, uh, you know, everybody's talking about how this bill is being fast-tracked. The right move in, in truly fast-tracking this bill would have been during a special session. 
would have been back in August when I was at the same podium saying before school starts, this needs to get fixed. That was before school resource officers were pulled out of buildings. That was before violence was occurring in schools that school resource officers would have prevented had they been there. So uh, no, we need, it, it needs to move uh, quickly. We could have done it already, um, but folks have had time. Like for, for them to say they don't have the bill ready, uh, day one of session, the school resource officer issue was not a surprise to anyone. They've had months. We should have had a bill dropped, or we, I should say we could have had a bill dropped that had been vetted by all stakeholders, agreed to, and was essentially here to be presented, get feedback on, and passed. So the question is, if, if you've been telling the press, the public, the media that you've been working on this for months, then why isn't the bill ready? Why are you having to lay it over in the House Public Safety Committee? Well, because it's not ready. Now, I don't want an imperfect bill to pass. I want the best possible bill to pass. If that means we've got to do work on it, fine. But I think we're being a little bit disingenuous if we tell people we've been working on this uh, for so long with so many people only to get here day one of session and actually not have a bill that's a finished product. And is it your opinion that if the amendments that have been introduced today in committee in the Senate had been passed, this would have been a bill that would be ready to go? Uh, in, in my biased opinion, yeah, or at least would have moved us uh, way closer. The, the first amendment I offered uh, was the solution I suggested all the way back in August, was just repeal it, repeal it. Everybody is saying uh, that we haven't had an issue with school resource officers in Minnesota in the past. The governor said during the interview at the state fair he's not aware of one incident in which a school resource officer has been found to or charged with using unreasonable force, right? Uh, people have said, They've admitted now there's a lack of clarity in the bill. Uh, and they agreed with us uh, when they said that they don't want school resource officers to be pulled out of buildings. Yep, that's what the law resulted in. So if all those things are true, then there's a real easy, simple fix. You push a reset button, repeal the law, which doesn't mean we're done with the issue. We can then begin to have additional conversations about a model policy, about a universal uh, standard for school resource officers, all the other things that can be discussed. That's what's holding the bill up right now. And it's what's preventing us from uh, passing an immediate fix that would put school resource officers back in schools and increase safety. Just repeal it. Everybody, I think everybody, not everybody, most people, by now, I think you can admit the bill wasn't passed, it's not doing in the way it was intended, there's a lack of clarity, there's issues with it, great. Erase it, let's start over. We can admit that we're wrong, we're only human, right? Just because we're legislators doesn't mean that we're always right about everything. We all know that's true. Set your ego aside, let's lead, Let's backtrack, make a fix, and do what's right for our kids and for our schools and teachers. That's all we're trying to do here. What's the most problematic thing, I mean, separate from the fact that you think that this law shouldn't exist, but in the context of the bill to make the tweaks, what is your biggest uh, gripe with that right now? Sure, there are, there are a few, but the one I would focus on, uh, there's really a couple. There's a conversation about really two words. Uh, one is shall versus the word may and the flexibility that that would afford police officers and their basically ability to step in uh, and prevent or stop harm occurring to anybody who may be involved in a dangerous situation like a fight, you name it. There's also conversation regarding a model policy and, and essentially the, the group of uh, people that would be a part of the process to develop that model policy. I happen to believe the legislature exists for a reason. It's our job to do stuff like that. It's our job to make, craft, and pass laws. It's not our job to uh, abdicate that responsibility to groups of people who may have other agendas or a lack of expertise in a given area, especially when we know that the bill calls for that group to be uh, made up of groups who are already against the very legislation we're trying to pass that would be a fix. So I think that's part of the problem as well. We don't want to pass a bill, claim we fix it, only to have a group of unelected people then basically take us back to where we are now, which is with an existing law in the books that's an issue. Can you quantify this issue? Because <clears throat> in the fall, we knew of districts that were that relationship with their police department had ended and mm -hmm. he's been stopped. Um, some went back. Who's left out? I mean, do you have a district in your, a school district in your legislative district that would, that is without SROs, but would have them back in should some legislation pass? I mean, how many districts are there that are, this is going to affect? It's a great question. And I'm going to give you a number, but before I do, I'm going to read this because this comes from a school out of Hennepin County. This was a news, a news article that was posted not long ago. 
the safety and well-being of our students and staff remains our highest priority. Our schools have a strong safety plan, which includes our SRO program. Each officer has spent time cultivating positive relationships within our school communities. They're part of our Osseo area schools family and are very missed. So they're not all back. Uh, the number that I think it got up to at one point was 40. Of course, some have come. I asked somebody to reach out today, and the number they gave me back again was 40. 40 schools or districts. Now, I think you and I both know that that's likely a little bit less now, but here's what people need to understand. Um, just because a school district may report that their SRO program is back in action or is in place does not actually give you the full picture of what's happened. The real question is, uh, what, is it, what is your school resource officer program today compared to what it was before the law passed? That's the real question. In some districts, they're still not back in the buildings like they were before. And in other districts, they're telling people that, yeah, we've resolved it or we fixed it or we have found, this is the word to pay attention to, a workaround. A workaround might mean that you've got officers who otherwise would be in the building like they were in the past, sitting out in the community somewhere, hopefully ready to respond at a moment's notice. That's not a fix. That's not us being in a better position uh, compared to where we were before the law was passed. That's what I'm talking about when I say we're trading minutes for seconds. That's not a good trade for the people of Minnesota. It's not a good trade for the safety of our kids and teachers and schools. And that's what we're trying to fix. And Peter, that still is occurring at many districts and school buildings all across the state. Could you get on board with a model policy for SROs if it had a different enforcement mechanism? So I'm not going to speak for all Republicans in that regard. I'll speak for myself. The simple answer is yes. I'm a common sense legislator. If we can come up with a model policy uh, that people are comfortable with and we think it's going to actually solve the problem, of course, we'd be silly not to give that consideration. Other things have been approached that way in the past. What people really need to understand is, uh, you know, sometimes we get up here and, and we're all, I'm kind of fired up about the bill, right? Because I'm, I'm passionate about keeping our kids in schools safe. Um, and so we're not up here huffing and puffing for a show. This is not political grandstanding. We didn't manufacture this issue like we were accused of last summer. Clearly, it's a real thing, right? And so what we want to bring about is a true change. If that means we have to be bipartisan and collaborate and not get the perfect bill that we want, but it's still going to bring about the positive change we're looking for, then absolutely, I'll give it consideration. What are your thoughts about the, I guess, just underlying original intent of the bill. I mean, because obviously we see now with the DFL's attempt to uh, fix this, um, you know, they never intended for SROs to just pull out of schools entirely. Um, I mean, I'm just curious, like, you know, the fact that the original bill intended just to have officers not able to put students in prone position or, or you know, other elements of that. Um, I mean, what do, you, what do you think of the original bill itself? So, Quinn, much like you, I uh, am an optimistic person by nature, and I, I want to take them at face value, and I want to take them at their word, and that they're being genuine and sincere when they say that. Uh, there are others out there that believe there is a concerted effort to have school resource officers removed from the schools of Minnesota, period. That that's the goal, that's the intent. I think we all know, or many of us know, that certainly is the wrong answer. And oh, by the way, that's a decision that should be left up to individual communities and school boards, right? That's not for the state of Minnesota to decide. And so I think what we've heard from a lot of school districts in general, specifically about laws passed last year was, well, if that's not what you intended, you failed in the legislative process. If you didn't intend this to cost us more money, if you didn't intend this mandate to be harmful, if you didn't intend this law to force SROs to move out of our buildings, you were wrong and you need to fix it. Uh, intentions are great, but that's why getting feedback from the folks who have to actually implement these laws is so critical. The second and third order effects are often lost on the, co the political conversations that take place here in the Capitol and who we need to hear from are the non-political, non-biased folks who are gonna give us actual feedback as to how it's gonna impact them on a day-to-day -day basis. I'll share this story with you. Um, every, by the way, every school district in my district that I have visited with, one of their priorities is fixing the school resource officer law that passed last year, every single one of them. One of the districts I said, I visited with said, the first day of school, a parent called and they were asking for our SRO because the parent and a child had had a fight and the parent wanted to call and reach out to the school resource officer who they knew and had a relationship with just to make sure they knew the school got the kids safely. That's what we're talking about. 
I don't know why we would stand in the way of bringing those people back to buildings or allowing them to be there in the capacity that's necessary for them to build relationships. In Lakeville, where I went to school uh, way back in the day, the hometown I now represent, the very school board I served on. Many of you may have seen a video circulating on social media just a couple of weeks ago of a very brutal fight that was taking place between students in the very place I used to eat lunch as a kid, the very place my kids are gonna go to school. Something that would have been absolutely unimaginable and unthinkable when I was a student or just a few years ago. And in the midst of that brawl, there's a teacher or a staff member, I don't know what she is, who is trying to intervene, trying to grab these kids, pull them apart from each other as they're swearing and beating on each other, as the crowd is gathering, as people are screaming and moaning, and she looks to the crowd and she says, please, help me. She said it a few times. Of course, she was talking to maybe other uh, students, teachers, or people that don't know what they can or can't do anymore to keep people safe in those situations because of the law that was passed. And she wasn't just asking the people in that crowd for help. She was asking us as legislators, as those who oversee state government for help. And she symbolizes every teacher out there across the state right now asking for us to help them, asking for clarity, and asking us to help address the discipline issues occurring in our schools all across the state. We can't fail them. We cannot pass a Band-Aid when they're asking for a cure. When you talk about that cure, does that need to be a component that deals with why students are getting into these altercations? Of course. Of course. I don't think that can be solved only by schools, though. I mean, that goes all the way back to family upbringing, you name it. There's, there's so many ways in which I can tell you what doesn't help, uh, politicizing the issue and making it combative, making it uh, polarizing, having it divide communities. See, here, I want to address this part of the uh, conversation as well because I feel like people are either too afraid to talk about it or they just want to uh, uh, skip over it. Uh, oftentimes, all the testifiers like to talk about how this bill is, uh, or, or how school resource officers uh, in schools are harmful to minority students. Um, and all the parents I hear from, the kids that testified in the House uh, Public Safety Committee uh, yesterday, were all minority kids and minority students coming forward and saying, we want school resource officers in our schools, they keep us safe. They make me feel better about my child being in school. Uh, the kids feel more comfortable with their learning environment. That's part of the process as well. And so this, we have to stop dividing communities. We have to stop dividing people by race, by demographics, by geography when it comes to helping our schools and helping our students and keeping people safe. Like I've said from the very beginning, this is universal. Republican, Democrat, black, white, greater Minnesota, Suburban Minnesota, Minneapolis, St. Paul, we all care about the safety of our kids. Stop polarizing and dividing with this issue and let's actually fix it. All right, thanks everybody, appreciate it. Thank you very much for being here. Have a good Valentine's Day. Don't stay too late and avoid the snow. Is it already snowing, by the way?